Hi everyone, it's Nico Sharp, and I just wanted to do a real quick stream to show off two budget farming builds for convocation. Hold on! The um, very first build. Uh oh, I've got background it all going on here. Jason Bourne, Ready PG-13. Jason Bourne. So, the first build I'm going to show off here is this um, Shin Hair theme deck. Basically, um, the theme for both of the budget decks I'm going to show off today is that there's no PvP rares or legendaries. Um, this Shin Hair deck is actually focused a lot around the uncommons. It's a late level build, so if you already have a Shin Hair, that's fine. Cleric doesn't matter. You don't have to be a cleric. Um, there's some benefits to Cleric. Uh, it's fine to play Warrior or Mage here. Actually, Mage might have a lot of benefits with Seasang, so you can pitch cards because there's a lot of Crypt um, interaction in this deck. So um, I'm just going to go quickly through the deck. 22 Blood Shards. It's a low curve, so you don't need a lot. Brittle and Gorger has a Kick Catcher glove, so you can pull it, put the um, Kill Blades with Lethal into play. Um, let's click on that really fast. Oh, maybe I can't click on that. Nope. Killblade is 1-1 one, one lethal troop, um, so it's nice to have. I've just splashed one life siphon. You can put any other card in the slot. Um, I know this is not budget, but um, just splashed it. Um, the other card I was thinking of that is more budget was... What was it? Um, uh, Sepulchra Maggot. You put a Sepulchra Maggot in here, because um, you're going to have some sacrifice triggers. In fact... No, I won't do it right. Oh, I'll do it right now. Whatever. Let's put the maggot in. Since this is budget anyway, um, that might have been one oversight on my part. Okay, we're going to save. Um, underworld Recruiter. Your Underworld troops in all zones have cost negative one. Her equipment, trinket. When another Underworld troop enters play under your control, this gets plus one, plus one. She used to be even stronger because she even gave herself plus one, plus one, but she doesn't do that anymore. But since we have a lot of one drops, sometimes we're going to wait to drop our one drop later um, because it'll become a zero drop after we play the Underworld Recruit. So we'll play her on two and then drop all of our one drops right after her. Tormentor, sometimes I play it right away because he can start putting eggs in the deck. Doesn't matter a lot against the boss encounter. We're going to be farming the Smoldering Dead dungeon, which is the Unchained Goliath final boss. And. Um, I don't know if I have time to play any of the games, but I just want to show off the deck. So, uh, four Fordle Engerger, four Hatchery Tormentor with the weapon that allows you to put two eggs in the deck instead of one. Um, other interesting thing to note is every time the Unchained Goliath damages himself, you put eggs in his deck at the end of his turn. So that's kind of a funny interaction with this particular card. Um, not that it matters, because the whole point of the Unchained Goliath is you want to kill him before he turns. Um, Shin Hair Eulogist, Chest Equipment, um, when he enters play, you can sacrifice another troop, any troop in play, gain two health. And if it's a Shin Hair, he'll get plus one, plus one, because that's his base ability. Shroomshaw, replaceable. I was going to run the head equipment on this particular card, but I ended up not. So definitely replaceable common. Probably just throw in another one or two drop shin hair, whatever you get. Um, it is nice though that he does create battle hoppers, so that's more one cost shin hair. Actually, this deck could definitely use one cost shin hair because it interacts with um, one of the cards I'll talk about later and why we're using the head equipment. Grave nibbler, we're running three. Uh, when something dies. If he's tunneled, he gets plus two, plus two. Basically, he becomes a 4-4. Four, four. So that's really nice. We have Cog the Paul's Thirst, which is a buff. It's a plus three, negative one defense buff. If you happen to have four Blood Shards in play, you draw a card. That's a good way to get in enough damage at the last encounter. We have four Necrophage Senseis with the Glove Equipment. Oh, no, actually, we're not using the Glove Equipment. But he enters play and gets plus one, plus one for each troop in our crypt. We have three Abominates to put troops in our crypt and give permanent plus three, plus three buffs. So there are a few buffs in this deck between the Cog the Pulse Curse and the Abominate. Then we have the Blood Cauldron Ritualist and the head equipment that I was mentioning earlier. When he enters play, put a Shin Hero with cost one or less from your crypt into play. 
So that's why it might be nice to have another powerful one-drop shin hair. Right now, we basically want to combo him with Furlan Gorger or anything that creates battle hoppers. Then we have Nori, who uh, we're also running the feed equipment for, and when he enters play, we create a battle hopper. We've given him range, uh, rage, and um, there's only two copies because he's rare. And he is an arena card, so he's pretty easy to get. And then we just splash this maggot. So basically how the deck plays, um, I don't want to do an entire run because I don't think I have time to. It only takes about mm, 10 to 14 minutes to do a run of the Unchained Goliath Dungeon, Smoldering Dead, uh, Rose Knight, whatever you want to call it. So basically how the deck plays, and I think I mentioned it slightly before, is you want two shards. And you want a few one drops, maybe a few two drops. Ideally, you want an underworld recruiter and maybe a bunch of one drops. Uh, on two, turn two, you want to drop the underworld recruiter. Then she is going to lower the cost of all the cards in your deck. So if you have her and a bunch of one drops, then you follow up and you play all your one drops. And then what happens then is that she gets plus one, plus one for every underworld troop that enters play. So she becomes quite large, and she, because we're playing Cleric, we also have Steadfast, which allows us to not lose a blocker after we attack. So even if she's big, we get to attack with her, and we get to block with her. Uh, let me quickly go into my talents. I don't think they matter very much, but I'll explain why I chose these talents. We're not running any Clerics in this Cleric deck, so we're not even getting the affinity. We're getting the Mom Unit of Faith because the Monument of Faith allows us to have Steadfast. We're going to play this ability where when we have 25 or more health, because we're going to start with 28 health, the troops that we draw get plus one defense, which is a nice bonus. I'm also choosing Blessings grant me an additional two health, so I might be able to pop back up to above 25 if I take any damage. So uh, the next few troops I draw will. Uh, be able to get that plus one defense. And then we're also playing this enhanced blessing where a random troop we control, the highest cost gets plus one, plus one when we play a blessing. Uh, these two abilities will barely ever happen because you usually beat any encounter by turn four, five, six. So the likelihood of you drawing a blessing is pretty slim. And then just splashed one point for plus three health. We could have taken anything taken this plus three, we could have taken the Divine Altar. Maybe, yeah, so Divine Altar wouldn't have done anything for us, so the plus three health was probably the best choice. I was kind of hoping, I saw the arrow going this way, I thought I can connect to the Good Karma um, aura aspect, but I couldn't. Anyway, so that's the deck. Uh, I would do a test play to show you how it plays. It takes me about 10 to 12 minutes, Roy. Um, even with the budget deck. I have a tune deck that can do it faster. I'll show you my tune deck before I end the stream. I've, I've showed it before, and I've, I think I recorded it. But anyway, so... Okay, so that's the Shin Hair deck. And it's pretty cheap to build. So that's always nice. Okay, what was the other deck I was playing earlier? Dwarf Cleric? I think it was Dwarf Cleric. Again, I believe this deck doesn't really matter what class you play. Cleric is nice because it's new player friendly. And you get that steadfast item. This deck is themed around Mono Sapphire, actually. Mono Sapphire Artifact. And it could be just fine playing it as Dwarf Mage or Dwarf Warrior. So the theme of this deck is just flood the board very quickly. Oh, Dwarf Mage Slaughter Gear, and it takes about 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, my computer's kind of slow, too. I The Ruby deck I'm running does have Slaughter Gear in it, but it's really blazing fast. It's Elf, and um, I'll show you it in a second. You'll see why it's fast. Anyway, this deck is also very fast. 
it takes a few more turns to win um, in comparison to the Shin Hero one I just showed. And it also could probably be tweaked to be even faster. I'm not quite sure. It doesn't have any real bad matchups, but you do want to kind of draw into those shards. So again, this is budget. There's not anything in here that's rare or higher. That's PvP. There's a few PvP cards that are uncommon or common that oddly cost a lot because people are going crazy with set two and set one cards on the auction house. But other than that, the deck's really cheap. 22 Sapphire Shards, 3 Charge Bots. We're playing 3 Gearsmith to look for artifacts. We're playing 3 Hornet Bot plans with the equipment that makes it zero cost, which is a chest equipment. 3 Electroids, no equipment. He's a 1-drop 3-4 that can only attack when you have 4 or more Robot slash Dwarfs in play. We have Warhulk plans without the equipment. We are running this because the Warhulks help us get to lethal damage on the final boss. You don't really need this outside of that scenario, but building up the fatal board state for the final boss is important. Technical Genius, just to speed up our, our play of troops, he reduces the cost of all artifacts in all zones. <clears throat> Excuse me. Reactor bot with the trinket equipment. When I gain a charge, another target robot gets plus one, plus one. This also helps us push fatal or lethal in the final um, fight, in all fights, actually. Then we're playing Armatron with weapon. He gives all robots in play plus one, plus one. There is other benefits to playing Dwarf Cleric here that I'll explain in a second. Uh, the Inductocopter bot. Not running equipment, but when he attacks, we gain a charge, so that'll pump up with Reactor Bot. Plan deployment orders, just three copies of the boots, so that we can um, dig through our deck from our cards, and that those cards get a reduced cost. And then we're playing both equipment pieces on the Junk Repurposer. I haven't found it to be really effective, because I only have two copies, and it's kind of a late play. But he will allow us to get more card draw, and then also put Warbots into play. Um, and then the Warbot Bunker, another useless card in the Cleric deck. You can replace this with pretty much anything. But it puts a Warbot in play, so it triggers with the Junkyard Repurposer for card draw. And it gives all my robots Steadfast, um, or plus one defense. Uh, the Helm Equipment gives them Steadfast, so I guess it's okay to play. Um, and then Terabot is a 3-5 flyer that gets reduced cost for every Dwarf and Robot in play, so you can... Uh, pump a bunch of those into play really quickly. So that's this deck, and then I'll show you why the Talent Tree 4 Cleric is pretty good here. So we get the Monument of Fate, which is an artifact, and it gives all of our troops steadfast. Then we also get Healing Aura, which I believe is a constant. Let me see if I can look at Healing Aura. Yeah, it's a constant. But we get this ability here, which allows us to create a Soul Vessel for three resources. And it is an artifact troop, so this has a lot of benefits when you're playing an artifact-themed deck. Where you, There's a lot of times where I'm swinging with a 9-9 soul vessel um, pretty early on. And the rest of the talents don't matter too much. I mean, the blessings moving up in my deck allows me to draw more blessings, which actually isn't bad in this deck because the blessings give you charges because the dwarf cleric... I think it's only Dwarf Cleric, starts with the Blessing Rod in play, which is another artifact that gives you a charge every time you play a Blessing. So that actually combos really well with Reactor Bot also. So that's kind of the stuff going on in this particular deck. Again, it's super cheap. You probably could replace some of the cards in here, like Junk Repurposer, Warbot Bunker. Uh, one of the good replacements for Junk Repurposer might be the Helm Equipment for... Warhulk plans, where it puts another worker bot into play. Again, yeah, I'm just sticking with mono theme because it's easier to um, not get screwed on your shards and you're able to just quickly play the cards without worrying about your shard fixing. It also it allows you to kind of build a, a different theme deck because a lot of people build dwarf, ruby, sapphire decks and Sometimes it gets a little boring. I think War Machinist is cool. He does a lot of damage. 
but sometimes people get bored playing that. So that's the um, Sapphire themed Dwarf Robot deck. And I, both of the decks I just showed, I flew through the Smoldering Dead Dungeon or, or Rose Knight or Unchained Goliath, whatever you want to call it. About, I'd say, under 15 minutes for both runs, which is pretty good. I actually lost one or two encounters with this deck just by trying to figure out how to play it right. And I still blew through the, the encounters pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, so those are just two budget decks. If you want to farm Convocation and you don't have a lot of cards in your inventory, that's a great way to go. Um, if you do have a lot of cards and you have a elf you want to level, I'll show you the deck I used, I used for farming the um, Entrap Settler stuff. And I modified it a little bit since I streamed it a while back. So this is the Entrap Settler deck, and it is blazing fast. I've I've tweaked it to the point where like I consistently win on turn three, almost every encounter except for the end end encounter because I just build up a board to swing for fatal. So. This is the deck, and I'll explain why it works so well. Um, so we have 21 resources in this deck. It's lower than most, but we're also running two Spectral Acorn, so it helps us cycle through. And the nice thing about the Ridge Rubbles is if we don't need the Ruby Shards, we just get it for Rage, because there's a lot of Orcs in the deck. So the Rage pumps up our damage very quickly. We're running three Crushing Blows to push through Crush Damage. Running two Savage Raider. I could have ran three, but I didn't really have the space. Running three burns with the um, without equipment. So just two damage. It's quick removal. Most of the early game troops in this dungeon do not have more than two health. We're running Ridge Raider. I was running the Helm to give him unblockable, but then I decided against it. But it's just a one-drop orc that has plus one, plus one when another orc's in play. Flosh, which is another orc, great for pumping in fatal damage, Ridge 1, running three copies, running two Ruby Infusion devices. This gives us a charge, which is pretty important in a mage-based alt deck, and it allows us to give troops speed, which is another very important thing in this particular deck to pump out damage. We're also running Crimson Clarity with the Helm equipment, so we can give a Ruby troop speed, and this is also super important. So speed is a big theme in this particular deck, and not a lot of troops have it. So another card we're running as many copies as we can of is a Skittering Scarn, because it gives two random troops in our deck speed. So at the beginning of the game, because we're running two of these, four troops in our deck will have speed, or someone in the deck will get like the buff two or more times. That does happen sometimes. The Psychotic Anarchist, we're running the boots, so when he dies or goes back to your hand, we also draw a card. He's just for additional card draw, and he has speed, so we don't have to worry about giving him speed. We have the Crazed Raiders that have Empower and Rage 1. So if you Empower it, it'll be a 4-2 with Rage 2 and cost 4. And we'll talk about that more in a second. Another Empower Troop, Stingshot Sniper, that has... Uh, when this attack deals damage equal to its attack to one random opposing champion troop. When you empower this, it deals damage equal to its attack to two random opposing champions or troops, and it's a 4-4 flight troop for six. The glove equipment on it is also pretty crazy because when a ranger you control attacks, it deals damage equal to its attack to random opposing champion or troop, including itself. So if it's empowered, It'll be a 4-4. It'll deal damage to two random opposing troops, then a third random opposing troop or champion. So it can hit the champion for up to 16 damage on one attack just by itself if there's no other troops in play and if it's not buffed in any other way. This equipment is absolutely crazy. You should definitely be considering running it if you can get it. It is legendary, so it might cost a little bit but it's not too bad. So again, this is a nosebleed non-budget deck for anyone that just joined, but it's very strong. So 
Maybe you notice also this equipment is all only rangers. So we have rangers in the deck basically that kind of help us achieve that. The Ridge Raider, the Savage Raider, the Crazed Raider, and Zoltog. We're only running two copies of Zoltog because he's higher cost and he's unique. So we don't need a whole bunch. We might be able to get him into play on turn three if we play like a um, Crimson Clarity on him and he would have speed. But every time he d deals damage or another orc deals damage, we make more Savage Raiders and they go into play. And then the last two cards are that kind of the explosive, um, other part of the explosive piece of this deck are the Slaughter Gears, which are super expensive. Um, and we're running the weapon equipment for the rep, or trinket equipment for the replicators that give them plus three plus three for each other Slaughter Gear in play. And then we're running the weapon and chest equipment for the Reavers that give it speed and plus two plus two for every Slaughter Gear in play. So. This deck is super duper fast. Turn three consistently. Turn two very rarely, but turn three very consistently. Turn four almost always. Uh, very rarely do you have to go until turn five. And the the speed combo. So the other cool thing about being a mage here. Let's go to the talents. So we're gonna start with an extra card, so we can combo into things easier. Spell Sprites, they get us to seven quickly. The trick is we want to transmogrify, or I'm sorry, embiggen as soon as possible because we give a true permanent plus three plus three. So if we put that on a Stingshot Sniper or a Slaughter Gears Reaver or a Quash Ridge a Raider or Tusker, they will end up allowing you to do so much more damage than their printed damage. Just because the Slaughter Gears Reaver is doing double damage to champions, the Quash is buffing another troop with that same amount of attack you just buffed it with, and the Sting Shot is shooting things in the face with that damage when it attacks either the champion or troops. So, Spell Sprites help you get to 7. Sometimes you don't get quite to 7, you only get to 6, so you can tell Kinesis something on the opposing troops board to get through Fatal or Lethal. You also have Soothsaying if you need to dig, which is just a base ability for four. And then we have the bonus card. So this deck is just ridiculously fast. Oh, and the other thing I didn't mention is I always forget a bit about this talent, Secret Knowledge. Well, this talent kind of breaks the deck in so many ways because if you draw a card that is A, something you can empower, like a Stingshot Sniper or a Crazed Raider, or B, something that allows you to play cards quicker, like a Crimson Clarity, and it gets a negative two cost, you're going to win extremely fast. Turn two. Like, turn two Crimson Clarity that has a zero cost, or even turn one, because you can draw into it with a uh, Spectral Acorn, or a, uh, what's this guy's name, Spell Sprite, because they both draw cards. So if you draw into a turn one or turn two Crimson Clarity with a zero cost, you're going to then have either four or five open resources and one of the troops in your hand is going to have speed. If you draw into a Crazed Raider or a Stingshot Sniper, you're either going to be playing a Stingshot Sniper for two, empowered, or you're going to be playing a Crazed Raider for free, empowered. So that's either a 4-2 Rage 2 or a 4-4 four, four Flight deal crazy damage uh, flyer. So that's why that this deck is so explosive. Uh, turn three wins are not unusual. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show. Two budget decks and then this crazy one that I've been farming with. The runs with this deck, even with my computer chugging along, don't typically take more than 10 minutes. I think I've done eight minute runs. I, do, I don't think I've done anything faster than that because it does take time to load the challenges and it does take time to think about how you combo out your hand. So, And then also there's triggers like the Quash Ridge Tusker triggers. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's all for me. I will upload this later so anyone can watch. See ya.